I don't know how many of you, uh, well, first of all, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I don't know how many of you ever remember going on road trips as a kid. I think the, uh, the farthest we went on a family road trip was a, 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 a driving trip to Florida. It always seemed to take longer to get to your destination than it ever took to get home. I don't know if you noticed. Mm -hmm. There was always one inevitable question that seemed to try the parents of uh, the patience of any parent. You know, you know the one I'm talking about. Are we there? Are yet? we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> and it was usually asked within the first 15 minutes of pulling out of the driveway. Well, well, today, I can tell you that we're about halfway there. We're just about halfway through the season of Lent. There are three Sundays left, and the following one will be Easter. So, uh, rhetorical question, how, how's, the, how's the Lenten journey going for you this far? How's it working? Each year, many Christians around the world mark our journey through Lent, by intentionally engaging in self-examination, penitence, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, and by reading and meditating on scripture. I, I took that list straight out of the Ash Wednesday service. For many of us, Lent is a time to rededicate ourselves to certain spiritual practices in the hope of getting closer to God and as a way to celebrate, uh, to celebrate Easter. Just as the season of Lent helps Christians prepare for Easter, first century Jews, people in Jesus' day, would travel to Jerusalem uh, early in order to, to prepare for celebrating Passover. People took time to prepare to celebrate that God intervened and delivered them from slavery in Egypt. Understanding this connection and the underlying human desire for closeness to God helps us better understand our gospel reading for today. Today we read about Jesus joining other pilgrims and traveling to the temple in Jerusalem in, a in anticipation of Passover. While, uh, while there are definite differences, the scene is not entirely unlike Christian preparations for, for Easter. People, people gathered in a holy place, remembering God's deliverance, and seeking to honor God through rituals and repentance. Sounds kind of like Lent, yeah? S Upon his arrival, Jesus encountered people engaged in trade, in the temple courtyard. Livestock were being sold for use in temple sacrifices, and there were money changers exchanging Greek and Roman currency for the Jewish coins that could be used to pay the temple tax. What happens next can probably, probably be best described as unexpected. Jesus flew into a fit of rage overturning tables and driving livestock merchants and money changers out with a handmade whip. This was not a direct attack on the rituals or sacrifices performed at the temple, but rather John tells us that Jesus accused them of turning the temple into a marketplace. The other three gospels describe Jesus going further accusing them of turning the temple into, the den, into a den of thieves. Jesus levels his attack against those who are trying to make a profit from others who are genuinely trying to encounter God in the temple. The focus had shifted from spiritual pilgrimage and preparation to one of commercial profiteering. What comes next is even more radical. We see that Jesus is, is, is essentially asked for some kind of sign or proof of his authority to do what he had just done. Basically, he was asked, who do you think you are? His response is peculiar and, and 
turned out to be kind of confusing. He tells them, destroy this temple, and in three days, I will raise it up. Now, naturally, they think he's talking about the destruction of the temple building in which they were standing. And it was, it was seen as, the temple was seen as a symbol of God's presence to the people of Israel. The destruction of that temple, it would, well, it would eventually happen approx approximately 35 or 40 years later. But that's not what Jesus was referring to. John tells us that Jesus was speaking about the destruction of the temple. He was referring to his own body. And that's the radical part. Let's not forget, the temple was a holy place where people came to give God thanks in celebration of life's milestones. People also came to the temple seeking reconciliation with God and to have an encounter with the divine. The temple was the place where people went to experience the transcendent. In that sense, not so much has changed between the temple in Jerusalem and our own churches now. It's where we go to connect with God. What made Jesus' words so radical was that he was saying that people could encounter God through him personally. John's gospel opens by telling us that in the physical person of Jesus Christ, God took on flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. Today, we hear Jesus underscoring this idea. In essence, Jesus is saying that he is God in human form. If you have an encounter with Jesus, then you've had an encounter with God. His body was a physical representation of everything that pe uh, people expected to encounter in the temple. Jesus was the in-person way to meet with God. Well, those who, had taken, uh, those who had asked Jesus for a sign of his authority were clearly confused. They thought he was speaking about the destruction of the temple building in which they stood. But they weren't the only ones who were confused. John tells us that Jesus' own disciples didn't quite understand until after Jesus was raised from the dead. Given some time and a little perspective, they remembered what he had said, and that's when we're told that they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. But that was then. What's the practical application for us today? To be fair, I don't recall the last time that I went to church and encountered livestock and money changers in the North X. In that sense, I don't think that there's a one-to-one -one correlation between this text and our lived experience. But there are some similarities. Like many of Jesus' contemporaries, many of us are genuinely seeking an encounter with God. During Lent, we are reminded that although we are not perfect, we have an opportunity to make things right in our relationship with God. The first portion of this story speaks in part to our relationship with other people. In our reading for today, Jesus literally lashed out at those who were placing obstacles in the paths of other pilgrims. In contrast, we ought to be going out of our way to remove any obstacles from the paths of other pilgrims. Last month, I invited us to consider how we actively cultivate a culture, a church culture, in which we use every possible resource at our disposal to help connect with people in our community and to help those people connect with God. We need to be proactive in this regard. Mark will later conclude his gospel with Jesus commissioning his followers, telling them to go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole of creation. That's not a call to passivity, but rather a call to action. Secondly, today's text also offers us a reminder that God is 
that God did not re remain uh, static in a temple, in a church, or in any other building. God is dynamic, on the move, and cannot be defined or limited by our expectations of God. In the person of Jesus Christ, God was doing something completely and utterly unexpected. The per in the person of Jesus Christ, God showed up in person and sought out a relationship with everyday people. When Jesus began his public ministry, he invited others to come and follow him. But immediately before his return to the Father, after the crucifixion, before the, uh, before, before the ascension, Jesus instructed his followers to go and tell others what they had seen. Come and follow, and then go and tell. He told his followers to show others God's compassion and to teach others the things that he had taught them. That's the destination that we're journeying towards. In our modern day, our reading from John's Gospel challenges us to be creative, proactive, and to dynamically engage the world around us, all so that we might help others have a genuine encounter with the living God. Let's pray. God of creation, your son took people off guard when he cleansed the temple and surprise them when he claimed to be the way through which we can encounter you. Help us to remove any obstacles in our relationship with you, challenge our expectations, and kindle our desire to see you for who you really are. We pray these things in the name of the living temple who walked in our midst. Amen.